melodies here in it.
God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare you all the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. you.
about any time before the sermon starts, you're on time. And there's something kind of beautiful about the way that we kind of are, are gathering in, in groups that are small and intimate, but feel like they're growing. At least if you're here right at 10 a.m., it feels like we're growing. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, the succulent labyrinth garden has continued to grow. Um, and I invite you to take a look at that if you want to stick any plants in the, the red parts of the mulch, you're welcome to. Or you can just deliver them to the front steps and I'll plant them for you sometime throughout the week. Um, you probably already noticed that the bulletin is a little more complicated during the season. The purple parts are the inserts. Um, so anytime where it says, like, reading, but then the reading's not there, you'll find it in the purple parts. I know it's a little cumbersome, but it saves your brand new pastor from having to do a million bulletins every week. So let's take a moment and gather our hearts and our minds. Our first lesson is recorded in Genesis 12, beginning at the first verse. God said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and the home of your parents, and go to a place I will show you. I will make of you a great people. I will bless you and make your name so great that it will be used in blessings. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And all the people on the face of the earth will be blessed through you. Abraham, who was 75 years old when he left Haran, began the journey as God had instructed. Here ends the lesson. Let's read Psalm 121 responsibly. I lift my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help, my help comes from God, who made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. God won't let our footsteps sleep, slip. Our guardian never sleeps. The guardian of Israel, Israel will never slumber, never sleep. God is our guardian. Guardian, God is our shade. With God by our side. The sun cannot overpower us by day, nor the moon at night. God guards us from harm, guards our lives. God guards our leaving and our coming back, now and forever. Our second lesson is recorded in Romans chapter 4. What will we say about Sarah and Abraham, our ancestors according to the flesh? Certainly, if they were justified by their deeds, they had grounds for boasting, but not in God's view. For what does scripture say? Sarah and Abraham believed God, and it was credited to them as righteousness. Now, when a person works, the wages are recorded, regarded not as a favor, but as what is due. But when people do nothing except believe, in the one who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. The promise made to Sarah and Abraham and their descendants that would inherit the world did not depend on the law. It was made in view of the righteousness that comes from faith. For if those who live by the law are heirs, then faith is pointless and the promise is worthless. The law forever holds the potential for punishment. Only when there is no law can there be no violation. Hence, everything depends on faith. Everything is grace. Thus, the promise holds true for all of Sarah and Abraham's descendants, not only for those who have the law, but for all who have their faith. They are the mother and the father of us all, which is why scripture says, I will make you the parents of many nations. 
all of which is done in the sight of God in whom they believed, the God who restores the dead to life and calls into being things that don't exist. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. Come from God, and no one can perform the signs and wonders you do unless by the power of God. Jesus gave Nicodemus this answer The truth of the matter is, unless one is born from above, one cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can an adult be born a second time? I can't go back into my mother's womb to be born again. Jesus replied, the truth of the matter is, no one can enter God's kingdom without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. So don't be surprised when I tell you that you must be born from above. The wind blows where it will. You hear the sound it makes, but you don't know where it comes from 
or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be possible, said Nicodemus. Jesus replied, you are a teacher of Israel, and you still don't understand these matters? The truth of the matter is we're talking about what we know. We're testifying about what we've seen. You don't accept our testimony. If you don't believe when I tell you about earthly things, how will you believe when I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except for the one who came down from heaven, the chosen one. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the chosen one must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes is the chosen one might have eternal life. Yes, God so loved the world as to give the only begotten one, and whoever believes may not die, but have eternal life. God sent the only begotten one into the world, not to condemn the world, but that through the only begotten one, the world might be saved. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. Everybody followed the reading from John exactly. You now have a blueprint of how to be saved, right? Completely understandable. You don't even need a sermon, right? No. I see the faces of people who pay my paycheck saying, we need a sermon even if it all makes sense. You might have noticed that we've departed a bit from the weeks that we, or the readings that we've had the last couple of weeks. We were in the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew tells the story of Jesus kind of like you would tell a story if you were telling the story to, to small children, right? It's telling you chronologically about the life of Jesus. Matthew's Gospel particularly wants Jesus to sound a lot like Moses and to make you remember the story of Moses so that you get in Matthew's Gospel that Jesus is a really good Jewish man that he's in the line of prophets, that he must be from God. John's gospel, on the other hand, there, there are some people who really love the gospel of John. Is there anyone who, John, is your favorite? No one that wants to admit it? Okay, we got one. John's gospel, for me, sounds a little bit like the Beatles during the 70s, where their songs start to be things like, I am he and you are he and we are he together. John's gospel is... A, type of poetry that sometimes doesn't make sense when you read just little tiny pieces.